Hi and welcome uh, to another review. Uh, this is the Seiko Spirit Smart SCEB009. Uh, as you can see here, this is a uh, bullhead style chronograph. It is a quartz movement. I will list the exact uh, quartz movement somewhere over here, and along with some specs, I guess. Um, because I don't know it off the top of my head. I'm just doing this when I can, as all my other videos. But I try to share my experiences with uh, the stuff that I like, and it's all personally bought by me. I'm not given anything. Uh, these are basically all from my own collection that either stay, often eventually go. Uh, but we'll see how this one turns out. Um, yeah, this is a model. It's definitely not new but is definitely very rare uh, but not as rare as three other variants uh, this is again the SCEB009 and uh, I'm gonna flash over here the other models the SCEB011 and the SCEB013 and SCEB015 and there's four of these and I believe I'm not 100% sure, but the, I believe they, these models were basically produced right around 2011 or 2014, somewhere around the, thereabouts, from what I've been able to dig up. Uh, but right now it is 2019 of September, about mid, past midway point of, of um, September 2019. So these are roughly between... What would they be? Five to almost nine or ten years old, right? Um, but they're still ticking and work great. And I think they're quite collectible because you do rarely see these pop up on the, the market. Uh, again, this one probably more than the others for some reason. Um, but uh, they're all very cool in their own ways. Uh, and the prices reflect that, uh, or at least how rare and and collectible they are. Uh, they do have quite a premium on a premium on them if and when you can find one. Uh, I was lucky to find one on eBay which is in pretty good condition. There's only like a minor nick. I'll show it to you. I guess if you can even see it right up there I guess. Barely noticeable but overall a very clean design and well the condition is very clean as well. Uh, hardly any significant scratches on the stock bracelet. And I believe it's pretty full. I only removed two links. Uh, and they're rather, I guess these are kind of long. So, um, but um, my wrist is about a little over six and three quarters, under seven. At least last I measured it which was a while ago, but I don't think I've changed much. It was 6.875, so just under 7 inches, let's say. Uh, but I measured uh, the circumference of this, and by just un unlocking this and opening it up and measured it across, you know, the, the length of, uh, of everything across, and of course this span here, and then with the added links, two links that I took out, which I do have still, um, that should fit a wrist size of about eight inches or again, just under that, maybe seven and three quarters or 7.875, somewhere around there, that ballpark. Uh, there's only two micro adjusts, uh, such as these very short clasps, which, what can you do, right? But the good thing about these is that they're not ridiculously long and big. Uh, bigger than they need to be and overall they keep a once on the wrist they keep a pretty slim profile um, you know it doesn't really bulge out or stick up and then drop back down dramatically so it's actually pretty pretty even across once it's on the wrist and it's a simple um, fold out um, double pushers to open it there's no obviously no safety lock it's not a diver it's just stamped but to be honest 
Yeah, it would be nice if it was milled, of course, but it would probably add to the thickness. Uh, but in reality, these always work just fine. I've never had one fail on me. I don't really abuse any of my watches anyways, but uh, as far as I've ever known, these have never uh, gone bad on any watch that had uh, stamped uh, uh, the, the clasp here, or at least the folding portion of it. It just snaps shut. Um, I'll try to go over the dimensions, and if I miss anything, which I might, such as the thickness and the lug to lug, I'm gonna put it up right around here. But uh, so I'm gonna just offset this and just say that I know that this is 43 millimeters, which is actually kind of typical for a lot of bullhead uh, chronographs. Uh, you look at the vintage Seiko. Uh, 6138 and I believe they are 43 millimeters as well. This shows very much the same dimensions and you look at the Stratton bullhead, the, the Ligero that they just put out. It's a micro band. Uh, very cool design but it is actually I think at the smaller size it is 43 uh, and um, they have two sizes and then a larger version is I believe 45 millimeters. I rarely see bullheads designs go smaller than that. But anyways, it is 43, but if you can see down the profile of the case this way, um, it's not exactly straight up and down. Uh, I'd say the widest point is, it looks like it, to me it looks like it angles or tapers ever so slightly in this way, and a little bit that way. So the base is basically about 43, but the you notice the bezel is kind of pulled in and that will actually probably measure closer to I think 42 or 41 and visually it does look smaller than the 43 overall um, the lug to lug you can imagine it's quite short it's probably to probably not much more than 45 if that but again I, I've posted it on the side here um, but I can tell you that these are, I don't know what the thickness is. I believe it's about 13. But again, I will post it, I would have posted on the side here. Uh, the lug width is uh, th 20 millimeters. And I believe this does taper down to at least an 18, it seems like. Um, very close lugs. And they kind of, I don't know how you would say the underhang, but they they do hang kind of low off of the case. And you'll see in, when I do a wrist shot, um, this hugs the wrist really well, and uh, it's just comfortable. And the bracelet is not bad, it's actually pretty comfortable too. Um, but um, there is no real lug, so that's why I use the straight straight uh, links all the way to the case. There's no like fitted uh, end link piece, which is fine. Uh, snap case back. I believe it's only like a uh, 10 bar. Oh, I guess it was at 100 meters. It's, it's all right, but there is no screw down crown. You just pop, pull it out, and um, and now to first position to change the date, right over here at the four, and uh, or rather 4:45 ish. And uh, pull it out again, of course, the hack, the seconds, and then set the time. I believe when you're in, I want to say it's in the first position, it's in the manual, but uh, you can use these pushers to adjust the some of the hand alignments. Um, obviously not the hour minute because you do that with a crown, but for the uh, center of the chronograph and even maybe the seconds, and all those, they can be adjusted. I believe you pull it out to the first position and you either hold both or one of these. I think this one uh, for a few seconds and then I think whatever does like a quick sweep um, is ready to go and then you just push it to nudge it across until you adjust it to be centered as possible. And this one, as you can see, is slightly off. I did try you know, doing that adjustment to see if it'll be better center aligned, but actually it'll go on 
I guess slightly to the other side of that center line. What are you going to do? It's an old watch. Um, it's not a Grand Seiko either. Um, but overall, given its age and and everything, but the the higher cool factor of this uh, looking uh, cool looking watch, um, I can kind of forgive some things. Anyways, it's a I guess a quartz movement. It's not a mecha quartz, in case anyone's wondering. And just before I start it, you have the running seconds here. Uh, obviously, the date. You got the. Uh, I think it's one twentieth. Uh, second counter, half a second. Yeah, I believe it's one twentieth. Uh, and then this is the. You actually have a minute and you can see this is two hands. You have a minute and an hour hand, so this can keep up to at least twelve hours. So. You just start it. It's not really a click. You feel a little something, like engaged, like a. I guess it's sort of a click, but you don't hear it like a, mecha quartz or mechanical movement where it goes tick. You know, it's rather silent, but you can feel a little kind of, uh, thing kind of clicking off inside, or pushing in, like one position. Tick. But um, you can see it just ticks away, which is fine. I don't have to have a smooth sweeper. I got plenty of automatic watches, and uh, this is a fun, carefree one for being quartz, you know. While it's doing its rounds, um, I believe this will keep running uh, uh, until I think I'm trying to remember. I think until it hits about five, or is it ten minutes? Somewhere around there. Then this will stop going. But when you just see, watch this tick. There you go. So that's one minute elapsed. So it can keep going. And then the other hand behind it, the hour will start advancing as well. So yeah, you can basically time it to 12. If you stop this, you can, if you people measure that accurately with this, uh, uh, but you have that option. You start it up. Uh, you also have a split timer. No, not like a Ratsarpante or something. Uh, you'll see what I mean. You, use, you push the reset button, and if you wait, two, three, four, five or so, it'll jump to where, it, um, uh, you know, it would have gone to had I not uh, pushed this button. Uh, and that's just so that you can, uh, an application for that is uh, you want to time overall, so you keep this, this chronograph still running, but if you are just trying to gauge how fast people come, say, uh, through a finish line, and you want to mark it, and then say, okay, Jimmy just crossed the finish line. You got some time before the next runner goes across, so you make a note of the time, how long did it take, and then you push it again, and it continues on, you see. So then whoever comes up next, if you need to, you can stop it and get a reading. And then once you're ready, quickly push it, you know, just push, push it back and you, you continue timing. And to restart or reset it, you just push this chronograph pusher as normal, like that. And then to reset it, it's right here. And it does not snap back. It does uh, do uh, the quick rotations, I guess, until it zeroes out. There you go. Not the quickest, but it's cool. It works. Um, I do think that uh, versus of mecha quartz, or the ones that you usually get, which is I think a VK sixty three, where often this will be. I think this would be a an hour is a thirty minute counter, or is it sixty? I forget. But then I know that there's always a twenty four hour, usually a twenty four hour sub dial, uh, which is kind of useless. Uh, you can't set it to a second time zone, so uh, I don't know. I guess it's to let you know what AM or PM it is if you don't know by looking out the window or being outside. Um, additionally, um, uh, I guess if you needed to read it in, in more military terms, you can uh, you know you can do that. That's with the other VK, I think sixty three. Make a course movement. They usually have a 24-hour thing here. It's not GMT. It's just a 24-hour subdial. 
but I digress, sorry. Um, so I got the dimensions out of the way, stainless steel, uh, some of the functionalities out there. Um, what else is there? A screw down crown. Um, I, I guess we'll just get into a, well, I think this is a pretty cool watch. Um, I always like the full head design. I just think it's kind of cool to have this unusual uh, setup with a crown. And, and if you have pushers, it doesn't have to be a chronograph. You can still have a full head design. This is what they call it uh, when the crown's up here, at least. Um, it just looks cool. Um, it's just different than having it here. It kind of keeps it more symmetrical. You definitely won't get pushers or a crown potentially pushing into your wrist from this side. And, um, you know, especially with this case shape, it's just very retro. I think this is very much a 70s uh, uh, product of that era of, of design, rather, uh, bullhead design. And you see that in the old vintage Citizens and, and of course, Seiko, their 6138s. Um, which I guess this is kind of a, they're modern. Those are, oh, those are really cool, by the way. Uh, the six one three eight. Usually, you, you see a lot of people with the, uh, the the brown, the brown uh, dial and or accents uh, with some bit of orange. Uh, that's very retro. And then, I guess there's that one that they call the is it the Black Knight or Dark Knight? I think it's the Black Knight. Um, same uh, layout as the. Uh, that brown one I was talking about, but it's more of a black and maybe some blue with some yellow accents. Uh, very cool. Uh, they can be quite pricey too, if well serviced and and uh, you know as much original parts and and all of that in very good condition. Uh, you could probably easily ask over a thousand for something like that. Uh, but if it's not complete uh, or something. Um, a little bit lower grade, I guess, in terms of condition or collectability. Those are the ones, you know, the automatics, but no hand winding or hacking. Uh, it's just like the 6139 pokes, you gotta shake it, much like the uh, SKXs or anything that uses a 7S206 movement. Um, but uh, yeah, those are cool, but uh, you know, with those, the chronograph movements on the uh, on like such as the such as the six one three eights and six one three nines, you know Seiko once they stop making parts, that's it. Um, and so basically, uh, for such a the chronograph component inside of a, one of those automatic uh, chronographs, uh, you can't be you just really can't fabricate one. And uh, basically, if Repairing something like that, if that chronograph unit module ever does go out, is to find a good example of the same model, more or less. You know, it could be a different color, but at least the internal components and some other features are are, are what they would be. And you can just uh, you'd have to you know donate it and swap it into uh, that that donor piece into the one that needs repair. So eventually. You know, if they keep this up, you know, with what remains of needs to be serviced and the 6138s and 6139s, um, you know, you just got to cannibalize other working models, essentially. And I assume they would otherwise be kind of bad condition externally where uh, you don't mind just gutting it for parts anyways. That's uh, it's probably less uh, work for you to, to fix up the watch. Instead of just just borrowing what you need and, and making one that's mostly ready to go, but um, yeah. So eventually, those ones will keep cannibalizing themselves, and thus I believe eventually there will be no parts to be uh, replaced. Uh, so yeah, it's the pitfalls of that until Seiko actually does maybe somehow revitalize that movement, which I doubt. Uh, so um. Something to think about if you're interested in one of those 6138s, 6139s. Uh, not all the components, well, not all the components are basically discontinued. So uh, you just have to have to scavenge what you can and put into the, the watch of repair and hopefully it gets it running. So these quartz uh, 
I would say these much more modern quartz versions of those, of the 6138s, although those have a more vertical layout of the dials. I think just two and a day date over here. Um, but, you know, it's still Seiko, so, and I think, uh, you know, without being a total uh, revival and uh, I wouldn't say copy because it's still Seiko, um, you know, they just kind of made uh, bullhead chronographs with quartz movements for uh, the early or mid 2000s, right? I see, I guess it's late because it's around two, 2010 to again 2015 or 11 to 14. Uh, yeah, so this is a great way to get uh, something like uh, one of those retro. Uh, Seiko chronographs, but uh, in a different format, and I think it's more reliable. It's a quartz movement. You don't have uh, to fuss with keeping it synced and and uh, running accurately. It just runs about as accurately as as can be, right? And uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about vintage uh, woes of whether the movement will last or even works properly completely uh this is pretty cool i like the, the general look to me is kind of speed masterish okay minus the bullhead design if you turned it or rather you just concentrate on the from the bezel to the dial it kind of has that flavor um which i kind of dig but it's definitely its own thing uh the loom on this is still good um rose green I, i'll try to give you a, a loom shot at the end and um, what else is there to say about this? I guess we'll just put this on the wrist and show you. Let me zoom out slightly. It just goes in like that. You can see, pull it back a little bit. I mean, it has a little presence on my wrist, but it doesn't exceed see my uh, wrist size and the lugs are right there and the size is right here so you got plenty of actually wrist that comes off with that so it's not that big because it's nearly a complete round of a 43 which is still which uh, lends to the very short lugs and you see how I was mentioning how well this curves down uh, it's just Seiko magic not just this but you know especially their dive watches they seem like they do seem like they're on the larger side when you look at the dimensions, but they have a way of cutting the case and everything. That when you put it on wrist, it's still pretty darn comfortable, and it actually surprisingly fits well and smaller than you think it would. So I'm trying to get some distance here. Something like this up close, it can look bigger than it actually is in real life. See if I can back it up a little bit more. See? And um, these don't really get in the way, to be honest. Never had it like, oh man, I'm stuck on the pushers of the crown. No, you know, sleeve goes right over it just fine. Um, or around it. But um, yeah, let me see here. Let me zoom back in. It's got a nice shine. I mean, you know, it's got applied indices with the Seiko. And uh, the indices too are applied. And they do really catch light really nicely. I don't know if it's even showing up that well here. You get the idea here. And look how the hands are done. You haven't seen anybody make it quite like that. And if you do know somebody, this is still... Um, a relatively rare or uncommon um, um, hour or minute hand. But uh, yeah, it feels great. You could do strap changes on this, but it's actually pretty tight in here, so you don't. Uh, a strap that's too thick probably won't work so well. 
really got to force it in and push the spring bars, the, the ends to make sure they go into the holes and double check it. Otherwise, um, a single pass could work, so even a double pass needle, but the key thing would be probably getting a curved 20 millimeter spring bar. So you got a little bit of give to fit, uh, you know, other strap options. Uh, these are just, these are not screwed, of course, you just uh, use a hammer and a pin to knock it out, but very easy to change. And um, if you look at this, it's not actually a black dial, it's like a charcoal, but it's got not really a sunray finish, but it's almost got a bit of a fume dial look. If you notice that it's kind of more dark gray or dark anthracite, whatever you want to call it, in the, mostly in the center, and then it gets kind of dark towards the edge. So that's kind of a neat feature too. Um, there's not a hell of a lot more to say about this other than, you know, for the few months I've owned this so far, it's been great. Um, I love the design. I think, um, it's very unique, especially the other three variants that I showed you earlier. Um, you know, you want to care for your watch, uh, something that's different from Seiko, different from a lot of other people, because not a lot of people do bullheads. Uh, it's a great way to go, and again, this, this retro design of the case works. And of course the curvature, as you can see, it just hugs the wrist so nicely. So, yeah, you can definitely you know, fit this on larger wrists or even smaller ones because the lug to lug is so short and the case back area is relatively curved. And do I mind the date window here? Probably not. Um, I like, do actually prefer to try to get a date in there provided it's not too, um, too, it doesn't stick out or like a sore thumb or in an awkward place and this is kind of typical and since the dial is dark not exactly black and but the date was black and this all kind of it's there but it just disappears uh, for the most part unless you're looking for it and that's pretty much it um did i forget anything i think that's it um anyways let me uh do a loom shot there you go Here's the loom shot. It's definitely much brighter in person. Like it looks like this, but when it dims, it still looks kind of like this. So um, yeah, it's this green glow. Um, very simple. Yeah, there's not really any way to really differentiate the orientation. You know, it's not it doesn't have like a at least a thicker or like a double double marker. Sorry about the this at the 12, right? So um, if you prop it up, which this thing can kind of stand on a desktop or, or a nightstand, okay. If you know your bearings, you should probably will still be able to make out the time. And definitely, I believe, on the wrist. Sorry. On the wrist, um, you you should be well aware of where twelve o'clock is on your uh, wrist, so you know you'll be able to discern the time still. Uh, but it's good. I always appreciate having a decent loom, if not excellent loom, on a watch. Let's t make this brighter. Or turn back on the lights. Okay, so um, yeah, it's, the looms are okay. So it, it does the job. Uh, but, you know, you generally, you'd be lucky to get any loom on most, uh, you know, motorsports inspired uh, uh, chronographs or watches. They, for some reason, they don't think drivers will need to even be able to see time in the dark if they're racing late. Uh, which is kind of funny to me. I think it's not just limited to daytime, although mostly, but, uh, you know, sometimes you're just cruising late at night uh it'd be nice to be able to see something at 
uh, enhance uh, visibility at night with some loom. Uh, excuse the noise, it's my dog roaming around my room. She just woke up after um, trying to get to sleep. It is almost 1 a.m. It's not uh, in the afternoon. <laughs> Again, I do these whenever I got a chance. So um, if I did space out earlier, it's because I'm dead tired because I got up at 5 a.m. And uh, no naps today. But I got to keep doing what I got to do. So, I mean, it's mostly for you guys so that anyone interested in this, uh, if you can find one, they are available, but a lot of times they mark these guys up to eight, nine hundred dollars, maybe even beyond that a little bit. Um, it's just a rare watch. Um, uh, even, yeah, definitely it's a rare watch. You don't see these too often. And uh, I, was, I feel lucky that I was able to get it with a box, papers, uh, well, at least, yeah, to some degree. Uh, it's very complete with the extra two links. Uh, which again should fit up to almost an eight inch wrist so um and i'm not sure but i think that's the original amount but uh the owner i got this from um i guess wasn't even sure himself but um and he had a big wrist too he told me it was at least the eight inch wrist and i said like, okay well because there was a concern i wasn't sure if this would fit me some maybe it belongs to some, some dude with skinnier wrist than me and then it's like, oh, if you don't have enough extra links, then I might be st stuck out of luck. But that wasn't the case. Um, yeah, just, this would look good driving, the way the ref sun reflects off of it, as well as if you're cooking, you know, those, uh, uh, not those halogens or LED spotlights in the kitchen. Uh, they can really make this thing spark, if you can imagine, S sparkle, if you can imagine what's on the wrist, chopping up onions or whatever. <laughs> um, that is a way I gauge certain watches, how good they look to me in certain lighting. Uh, one is while driving, because your, your hand is optimal to see, kind of look at your watch anyways with, with the hands in the proper position in the steering wheel, more or less, and when you're in the cooking environment, at least the ones I see a lot is they got pretty bright lights, spotlights, uh, LED, I guess spotlights or, or track lights, or the or some of the recessed ones. But you know, you got a lot of pretty bright lights going on there, and um, that actually looks pretty good too. Just the way the the light plays off of the, the finished surfaces and and all the details and the dial and stuff. So, I hope I'm not rambling on too much, so I'm going to end it here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, if you are looking one, hope you can find one. Uh, by the time you see this, I may possibly have this on eBay, selling it. Um, not as much as people are trying to get for it, but I'm trying to get, a, I think, a fair price for a collectible watch. But, um interested hit me up or try to find it on ebay you will probably know uh, which one it is if if and when you can find it until then uh i guess we'll see you in the next review all right thanks